Hello from wherever, whenever you are listening to me, this is Michael Vaughn and welcome to Fundamentally Speaking. You have arrived at the right place to be encouraged and challenged in the word of God. As you deal with life today, in this podcast, I take fundamentals found in the word of God and expound on them in ways you may not have considered. So that you can ensure that your foundation stays strong, regardless of what you have been called by Father God to do on the earth. I encourage you, if possible, get something to write with, something to write on, and don't forget your Bible. As I launch into our topic for today on Fundamentally Speaking. Well, God bless you. Today, we are starting a new series of messages that I believe is going to be a blessing in your lives. We have been we have been now with you for the last several months. I think we started in March of 2022 and we've been on now for a few months. And I hope that you've been enjoying uh, what we've been bringing to you, enjoying the podcast, enjoying the word. I've been enjoying bringing it to you. And as uh, I said in my introduction, is that this podcast is to help you live in the world today. And as I was praying about and just seeking the Lord on what we're going to be talking about on this month, uh, what I thought to talk to or what came to me uh, was something that we may not have, may not talk about a lot, but it's something that we're all looking forward to. And guess what that is? We're all looking forward to heaven. Now, I know we're looking forward to heaven, but I don't know too many people that are looking forward to dying. So what am I saying? We're looking for the rapture. And uh, if you haven't uh, found out or if you if you don't know what the rapture is, well, uh, you have to read your Bible a little bit better. But anyway, we're going to talk about this month. We're going to be talking about looking for the rapture as believers, as the people of God. You and I need to not be so caught up into earthly things, so caught up into what's going on in the world that we forget that this world is not our home. And when I from what time when I was a boy, we were talking about the rapture, talking about when that first Trump sound, when that Trump sounds, when the trumpet sounds. The Lord himself will descend from heaven with a shot. I'm getting a little ahead of myself, but we talked about that as a boy, but you don't hear a lot of talking about that nowadays. You don't hear a lot of talking about the rapture. People seem to do church. People seem to do Christianity. People seem to do God. They seem to just are, are professionals at what they do. But I tell you what, we mustn't forget about the rapture that this world is not our home we are as the old folks say we are uh what do they say visitors passing through travelers passing through and as we pass through we need to have impact in this world and we need to grab as many people as we can to join us in glory so we're going to talk about looking for the rapture and so I want you to strap up and get ready because we're going to share some things that, again, maybe you haven't heard of and maybe you haven't thought about. Maybe you heard when you were younger. Maybe you heard in passing. Uh, but I want to encourage you today that we as the people of God, that uh, there's a passion, there's a, a, a fire that gets lit under us when we think about the fact that Jesus can come at any moment. Jesus can come while I'm talking, while I'm doing this podcast. Yeah, I mean, I get finished in it because because I tell you what, when the trump sounds, I'm out of here. Yes, Lord, when the trumpet sounds, I am out of here. Mark my words. When Jesus cracks the sky, I am out of here. I'm going back with Jesus. I ain't staying here till tribulation. Oh, no, 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 no. I am going with my savior. Hallelujah. And so that's what I want to encourage you with on today. Let's jump into the word of God uh, right now uh, so we don't uh, prolong the time more than I have already. Amen. First Thessalonians. Maybe that's a new book for you. First Thessalonians chapter four, verse number 13. First Thessalonians chapter four, verse number 13. Let's look what the Bible says. This is Paul talking to the church at Thessalonica. But I would not have you ignorant, brethren, concerning them which are asleep, 
that ye sorrow not even as others which have no hope. For if we, if we believe that Jesus died and rose again, even so them also which sleep in Jesus will God bring with him. Verse 15. For this we say unto you by the word of the Lord, that we which are alive and remain unto the coming of the Lord shall not prevent them which are asleep. For the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of the archangel and with the trump of God. And the dead in Christ shall rise first. Then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. And so shall we ever be with the Lord. Wherefore, verse 18, comfort one another with these words. People of God, we ought to be comforted with the fact that Jesus is coming back again. We see all that's happening in our world. We see what's happening in the United States of America. We see the violence that goes on. We see the lack of uh, integrity. We see the disrespect for authority. We see the corruption. We see all these things that are going on. But I want to encourage you. Jesus is coming back again. And even though all that we see that's going on, I want you to know this, that we serve a God that is stronger than everything that you see. You see, the media is only going to let you see the bad things that are going on. But I want you to know God is doing some things in the earth. And you and I as believers, we need to get caught up in doing our father's business. And so Paul was saying to the church at Thessalonica, comfort one another with these words. Listen. It ought to be a comfort to the people of God to know that Jesus is coming and his reward is with him. That I am not going to be in this earth always. That even when I die, bless God, if I die before Jesus comes, is that I'm going to be raptured. I'm going to be, my body's going to get up and we're going to meet Jesus in the air. People of God, we have hope. We have hope. And in 1 Thessalonians, this verse of scripture, it speaks of the rapture of the church, the body of Christ. Now, we have probably heard about this most, if not all our lives, that these are the last days. Jesus is coming. And then maybe we forgot about it because they're not talking about it a lot nowadays. But I want you to know that we have also probably heard that we're living in the last days. You're living in the last days. Well, yeah, these are the last days. And I'll tell you what, every day, every day that we get up is a day closer to the rapture. That I know for true. Every day that comes and goes, we are a day closer to the return of Jesus Christ. I truly believe that these are the last days that are upon us. You only have to look at what's going on wars and rumors of wars there's pestilence in the land there's famines in diverse places the love of many has waxed cold is that men are lovers of themselves instead of lovers of god is that we see what's going on in our society and i, pr I tell you the truth as a man of god i'm telling you i firmly believe that we are living in bible times we are living in the last of the last days. I I believe we're living in the last hours of the last of the last days. Jesus is soon to come. Jesus is soon to come. As believers, we what do we do? We need to as the Bible says in Luke chapter 21 verse 28, when you see these things, look up for your redemption draws nigh. Let me just let me just read that. I I just quoted it, but let me go there. Go with me to Luke chapter 21. Luke chapter 21, verse number 28. Luke chapter 21, verse number 28. The Bible says, and when these things begin to come to pass, then look up and lift up your heads for your redemption draw off now. As believers, we need to look up for our redemption draw off now. You see all the stuff that's happening in the world. People of God, people of God, let me let me say something to you. Don't get discouraged. Be encouraged because Jesus is soon to come. And even with all that's transpiring in the world, we don't need to get 
discouraged because greater is he what? That's in me than he that's in the world. So we mustn't lose sight of the fact that Jesus is coming back. Don't get so caught up in that nine to five. Don't get so caught up in the drama of your children. Don't get so caught up in, uh, you know, whether or not, you know, am I, am I healthy or not? You listen, you need to be healthy. You need to be healthy, but don't be so caught up into where that becomes your God. Don't get so caught up in how much money you're going to make. Don't lose sight of the fact Jesus is coming back. And as believers, we've got a job to do, whether we're doing that job in the marketplace or whether we're doing it in the house of God or whether we're doing it on the streets. Wherever we are, wherever we are is ministry. Wherever we are, we want to be available for Holy Spirit to utilize so that the gospel of Jesus Christ can be shared with every man, woman, boy and girl. We mustn't lose sight of the fact. Hear what I'm saying? The fact, the truth that Jesus is coming back. Hallelujah. My God. Here in America, we get comfortable in our daily lives. And we are at times forgetting that we're still on the clock. Were you still on the clock, bruh? You still on the clock, my sister. What am I saying? You still are working for Jesus. You still are working for the Lord. It's not time to check out. It's time to keep it moving. It's time to keep your heads up. It's time to continue to press in. It's time to continue to seek the face of God. It's time to continue to partner with Holy Spirit. You're still on the clock. Jesus is soon to come. And until he does, we must work while it's day. We must work until he gets here. Are you hearing me? My God, there's still time on the clock. It's our job to ensure that we get as many people into the kingdom of God as possible. And the way we do that, we got to partner with Holy Spirit. But if we get too comfortable, the Bible says, woe unto you who are at ease in Zion. There's too many people in the church. Too many people that say that they are Christians that are just comfortable. And what I, mean, what I mean by comfortable is that we can say a good word. We can sing a good song. We can shout a good shout. But are we transformed? My God. Are we changed by the blood of the lamb? Are we changed to the point where our lives are different and so that we want to make a difference in others and we move beyond the want to to the do? Hallelujah. We move beyond just that I want to see a difference, but bless God, we move to the fact, to the place where I'm working in the church. I'm working as an evangelist. I'm working as a mouthpiece for Jesus Christ. I'm working as a partner of Holy Spirit to get done what needs to get done in the earth. I'm working as an anointed vessel of Jesus Christ to destroy yokes in the lives of people, whomever Father would send me to. I'm a willing vessel. People of God, we got to keep working until the trump sounds. We got to keep working until we see him crack the sky. We're ever mindful of the fact that he's coming. But until he does, we got to keep working. <coughs> and we got to work with a passion. We got to work with an understanding. We got to work with the knowledge that Jesus is soon to come. And so we don't have time to be hooking and crooking. We don't have time to be compromising. We don't have time to be lowering the standard, lowering the bar. We don't have time to be accepting this and accepting that. And we don't have time to be thinking that, oh, uh, the, the, the Bible is, is just old school. No, 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 no. The Bible is old school, new school, future school. It's all the schools. It's principles are everlasting and God the Bible lets us know that he is God and he changes not he is the alpha and the omega he is the beginning and the ending he is the first and the last everything that we see consists he, he, he's made it. it consists of him hallelujah it's in him that we live we move and we have our being we got to continue to look forward to the rapture of the church Jesus is soon to come and we need to be ready and we need to get others ready. And that should transform how we think, how we do, how we go about our daily lives. So we're going to be dealing with this topic this month. You want to make sure that you hang out with us. I know that you are going to be blessed.
Hallelujah. Thank you so much for listening on today. And I know you were encouraged with the word of God. I'm sure you are on the tip of the of your chair. I pray that you will not just end with the good word. However, that you'll ask Holy Spirit on what you need to do in order to apply it in your life. The power of the word of God is in its application. And when we partner with Holy Spirit to apply the word, that is how we'll be sure to grow. I encourage you, invite others to join you every week for a new episode of Fundamentally Speaking right here or on our other digital outlets. They will be blessed and encouraged as you have been. Until next time, I'm reminding you that God has a good plan for your life.